Let's start with a small lesson, uh, Dutch, uh, links and rechts, it's left and right. So now you learned something at least today. Uh, um, why uh, am I interested in left and right? Maybe it goes back to an uh, unpleasant experience I had as a young child. Uh, every, it's a big part of Dutch culture that St. Nicholas comes uh, to Holland from Spain, in fact, uh, by boat. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, he is already in Holland now. He came a few weeks ago, and then he visits schools um, before his um, uh, birthday is celebrated on the 5th uh, of um, December. Um, and in first class of school, um, I had to come to St. Nicholas, who was sitting uh, there, and ha had to shake hands. Uh, and apparently, I gave the wrong hand. He refused uh, my hand, and I didn't know what was wrong. Um, and it stayed with me as an, a very um, uneasy experience. Um, I, um, in, in my family, it was not very um, common to shake hands, and nobody told me that you should give your right hand. Um, um, this is a small excursion, uh, but it fits the topic of emotions. Um, as you see on the, uh, in the left uh, picture, St. Nicholas is accompanied, accompanied by Black Pete. Uh, uh, he is black, and uh, in the past few years, there's a, a, a strong emotional discussion in Holland whether we can keep uh, Black Pete. It is uh, experienced by new Dutch people, so to say, who uh, immigrants uh, as uh, racist, like that the that the helper is is black. Uh, so there are now uh, creative uh, proposals to have a rainbow peats with in different colors, <laughs> and uh, different cities are decide are taking decisions uh, wh whether they stick to the old Dutch tradition or whether they recognize this uh, this wish. So this, this is a, a hot debate, full of emotion in, in, in Dutch, in, in Holland, in the news, and, and so on. And um, when, yeah. Um, but more uh, directly, uh, my interest in, in left and right goes back to <clears throat> a presentation on um, figurative expressions uh, on the hand um, that I gave two years ago in the first international symposium on figurative thought and language in Thessaloniki, organized by uh, <coughs> Angeliki Athanasiadou. Um, and uh, there are many uh, expressions, fixed expressions uh, with the hand um, to live from hand to mouth, and um, the others here are uh, as, as riddles you can fill in um, these red hands, uh, what it, to wash your hand? No, it means uh, have blood on your hands. Um, uh, to wash your hands in innocence um, and uh, to bite the hand that feeds you. Um, but in my collection of uh, fixed expressions, there were also some expressions uh, where the left and right hand turned up. Um, to have two left hands, uh, right hand man. Uh, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And here you see already that um, left and right have uh, different connotations, negative, positive. Um, um, yeah, so I asked ask myself, uh, are these uh, connotations uh, typical for our European languages or, or are they more general? Um, uh, and as a cognitive linguist, uh, I um, also asked whether on a more abstract level, can we consider left-right as an image uh, schema? Um, and um, values in language are also often uh, present in culture, so can we also find the left-right distinction and its uh, connotations in culture and, and society? Um, and uh, then other questions came up, which are more general, placing uh, le left-right uh, distinction in a more broader context. I don't know whether we have time for it. Uh, so this is a kind of um, second lecture, so to say, uh, putting it in a broader context. But we can take uh, parts of it if we, if we have time or if you're interested in it. Um, so I collected some um, expression, words for um, uh, labeling left and right. Uh, and uh, I thought that I should distinguish three types. And this is the main type. Uh, 
And what I found is that uh, languages typically take a word pair, positive and, ne and neg negative for left and positive for right, and apply it to um, left and right. So typically, the words for left and right are not original. They are taken from another domain and applied to left and right. For example, um, curved and straight, um, um, right is uh, straight, and um, links in Dutch is uh, curved. Uh, if those who know German know uh, the word for gelenk uh, that is curved. Uh, so apparently, uh, curved is um, um, experienced as uh, negative, uh, and right is, is positive. So, and that is applied to left, right, weak or weak and strong. So the the English lift uh, means originally weak. In other languages like Bakongo, female, male, and so on. Dirty, clean, low, high, the low hand, the, li the high hand, uh, the following hand, the leader hand, and so on. Um, one reference I found is Schiefenhoefel. He uh, collect. Uh, I had already a collection, but he also collected, and so. Um, then there are two other types um, in Arabi Arabic and and Hebrew. Um, at least uh, the word for sows uh, uh, is taken. Uh, and this has to do with the orientation to, orientation to the orient, to the east, uh, and then on your um, right hand is the, is the sow. So the word for uh, yaman or yamin in, in Hebrew, I think, uh, is applied to right. right? Um, so the absolute um, uh, directions, the absolute uh, wind orientations are, are taken. So not the inside feeling of good and bad, but from outside, and then applied to the sides of your body. And then the third type, uh, where you take uh, typical activities you do with the left or right hand in your culture. Um, so in uh, a Papuan culture, uh, women roll fibers uh, with their left hand on their, on their um, um, leg, uh, with their sorry, with their left hand, feeding smaller fibers into these fibers and roller, rolling a bigger fiber on their leg with their left hand. So the verb for or the word for rolling uh, was applied to the hand, the rolling hand. That is the left hand, um, or the hand for taking the shield. That is the left hand, right? Um, um, that the, in particular, the left left is uh, has a strong um, negative uh, feeling. Um, can also be illustrated uh, with looking at euphemisms for left. So uh, you often see that languages replace the word for left for another word to get rid of this negative uh, connotation. And it has happened in Scandinavian languages, uh, where left was replaced by um, an old High German word, "winistar," means friend. So the friend hand. Um, and I didn't uh, ask Scandinavian people how they feel now, how this word sounds, but, it, but probably, as it, it always happens with euphemisms, they take the negative connotation uh, in the long run. Uh, so you cannot get rid of it. Um, and also in Old Greek, uh, aristeros, the better hand, um, uh, replaced the, the, the older word. And in Spanish, you have three words I learned uh, for left, uh, zurdo, sinistro, izquierdo. Um, and already the fact that you have different words uh, shows that they try to get rid of negative connotations. So they borrowed izquierdo from Basque. Um, uh, so th a word you don't know can do the job. Uh, and sinistro is, of course, from Latin and zurdo. Um, um, I read somewhere it was is taken from a language that was already in Spain before uh, Latin came in. So it's an old, very old uh, word. Uh, um, when you have um, these words for um, labeling left and right, um, and I focus here on left uh, then, uh, because left is more productive, because left is more emotional, it's stronger, and it's, it's, it's a richer source for... Um, uh, uh, expressions and, and using it, taking it from this left hand domain uh, and using it for, for other uh, new domains. Uh, once it is there, then you can use it again for new applications. Like in English, there are many um, 
left-handed wife, left-handed dream, left-handed wisdom, um, uh, left-handed compliment. These are all uh, something is, is not okay with these things. Um, and in German, uh, uh, a marriage on, at the left hand is um, marrying down the social uh, ladder, uh, someone who has not that high status. And in Dutch, uh, to neglect someone, to, to leave, uh, to let someone lie on the left. Das mache ich mit links. I can do that with, the, with left. Um, also presupposes the negative um, meaning. Um, because uh, if you can do something with the left hand, it is not difficult. I can even do it with my weak uh, hand, right? Das mache ich mit links means it's easy. Yeah? Uh, so And that is positive, it's easy, but it presupposes the negative meaning of, of left. Um, and then this very nice use of the left hand in, in, in Spanish, uh, uh, to have mano izquierda, uh, to, that means to have uh, a good hand with something. Mm, and uh, Michael White um, uh, and also yeah, uh, explained that it comes in, in a paper, uh, uh, that it comes from bullfighting, right? There's a certain um, movement uh, with the left hand, which is difficult. Uh, and to have a, 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 a mano izquierda is to, 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 so here I would say mano izquierda has a positive yeah. connotation, yeah. Yeah? yeah? And we don't have to presuppose uh, negative uh, feelings, um, um, but, but it has a, a very specific uh, cultural context. And in that context, it developed this, um, uh, deviant, um, so it's, it's an exception, so to say, but it has, there's a story behind it. Um, so these were some observations um, uh, uh, from different languages on, on left and right uh, <laughs> on the descriptive level. And then I asked myself, if we go to a more abstract level, can we say that left and right is an image schema in cognitive linguistics like uh, front and back um, and up and down? Um, and um, what are image schemas? I quote here Lakoff, uh, uh, are relative, relatively simple structures that constantly recur in our everyday bodily experience. Containers, paths, links, forces, balance, up, down, front, back, part, whole, center, periphery. Um, left, right is not in the list. Um, and I looked in the literature and found in later papers like Klausner and Croft, they list left and right. Um, so, yes, let's look further. Um, um, this work by uh, Thomas Krzyzewski um, he, uh, has not been in really incorporated in the uh, image schematic literature, but he proposed that uh, in each image schema you have a positive and a negative pole. Uh, and that's an interesting idea. Uh, front is positive, back is negative, uh, up is good, and, and uh, down is negative. And it also, he also uh, talks about uh, left and right. So this last quote, um, the primary experience uh, of a dexterous right hand motivates the fundamentally, fundamentally positive ex axiology associated with the orientation right. Um, but this um, <clears throat> suggestion uh, to incorporate axiology in image schema has, to my knowledge, not really been taken up in cognitive uh, linguistic literature. And the image schema stay rather skeletal, so to say. Uh, uh, no um, emotion involved, and um, uh, Mark Johnson realizes this. I, I looked at his later publications. Um, and here's a quote from a paper from 2005. I do not know how to account for the role of feeling in image schematic understanding. The chief issue is to determine whether feeling merely accompanies image schematic structures or whether it plays a more constitutive and constructive role in meaning. But um, uh, he um, does not decide to incorporate it. And also left, right. Um, is not on, not very um, like uh, front, back, up, down. They are standard on the list, but left, right, not. Um, and I can um, understand that in a way because left, right 
is, um, as we saw, not a typical source domain for conceptualization, but a target domain. I mean, uh, up down is uh, applied to emotions. Um, we talk about, and uh, front back is applied to time. Uh, uh, but um, left right uh, is itself typically a target domain. Um, and um, yeah, we cannot, so probably it, it is something different. We cannot, uh, we can see, easily see what is up and what is down and what is front and what is back. But for children, it's very difficult to see what is left and right. They have difficulties to, to find out. It is not very visible. So probably left, right is um, something different. Um, and uh, so I, I have understanding for um, not putting it on top of the list of image schemas, so to say, or maybe leaving it out. And um, I don't know, I haven't decided for myself what to think about uh, incorporating axiology in image schema. So that is a thing for further uh, discussion. Um, so what have we found till now? Um, Words for left and right come from different sources. Um, mm, and um, there is a positive negative um, involved typically in, in many languages, but not in this south uh, north or uh, not in um, the hand for the shield or so. And I could not uh, find out whether later uh, the, this expression, the hand for the shield, uh, developed negative connotations. I, it, the literature doesn't say, and I don't. I have no access to that language. Um, um, yeah. So I say that I have understanding for leaving out uh, left, right. Uh, so well. Now let's have a look at culture. Uh, and I made a collection. And again, here, I, only a few weeks ago, I discovered this great book by James Hall, "The Sinister Side: How Left-Right Symbolism Shaped Western Art." And already the cover that uh, on the left side here, uh, so the left side of this person on the cover is 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 covered, so it's 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 in the dark, so to say. Um, then the right um, picture you recognize as a scene from Paradise, uh, Eve and and the devil. Um, um, and what? Does this? What is the left thing in this picture? Uh, does someone yeah. see it immediately? Namely, what is it? Uh, yeah, devil is evil. But I'm uh, uh, talking about the hand, right? Left and right. Uh, yeah, they they both use their left hand. Uh, both the devil and Eve. Uh, so uh, this this symbolize that this is uh, not a good thing, what is happening here. Uh, but it's not only in uh, Western art. Uh, I found this picture, and uh, on the left side you see a ruler, and on the right side uh, um, a subordinate person. And what is um, the symbolic thing here in uh, with regard to left-right? Uh, Yeah, could be. Yeah, that's a good that on, on the, the right foot forward for the ruler, and we see the ruler off from the right side. So his face is shown from the right side, and um, the servant is is shown from the left side. Right. Uh, um, in Tantra Buddhism, you have you can follow the left hand path or the right hand path, and and Buddhists are. Uh, Everything is okay, so you can choose your path, and it both leads to wisdom. Um, but this left-hand path is um, then you um, de deviate from the norms. So if you follow the norms, uh, um, then um, so then you follow the right-hand path. So in the fact that is deviating, that is dark and hidden uh, and feminine, that that are negative connotations. But um, you never left. Nevertheless, can choose that path and find wisdom following that path. So, in that sense, it's uh, um, 
And left and right in politics, I don't know whether you ever uh, uh, asked yourself uh, where this uh, these labeling came from, but uh, when the first uh, parliament um, came together in, in Fra France, uh, 1789, uh, uh, chairman had to be chosen, and those who were in favor of the candidate of the king uh, came and posited uh, stand um, on the right side of the king, and those who were in favor of the alternative, the op uh, candidate, uh, um, then had to stand stand on the left. Uh, and I would say that this this um, connotation of of good um, is present here, also because yeah. Um, um, supporting the, the existing order um, is good, and being opposite is, is not good. So these, these, this left-right in politics, its origin, uh, has, this, uh, has this connotation. Um, um, and I don't know about driving uh, uh, right or left. You can say it's neutral. It is... Um, <laughs> Um, uh, it's a choice. Uh, you can drive right or left, and both are okay. Um, but um, if you look at the history of driving left or right, um, uh, th there were many more countries who drove left in the in the past, and um, if uh, they ch changed to driving right, um, so many countries in the past decided to uh, accept uh, very uh, some strange countries uh, who, who keep their um, left driving. Uh, but so apparently maybe the, 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 this connotation plays a role that right driving feels as uh, the right way to drive. I, I don't have a car, so I, I, I don't, cannot talk about my own experience. Uh, if somebody has an idea about this, um, uh, or whether it is... Um, Better, I've never heard that uh, there are um, less accidents in uh, right driving countries than in left driving countries, but maybe it is the case. So one could say it is neutral, but the fact that they all go to the right in the end could mean that right feels as the better. Yeah? When you drive on the left, you pass other cars on the right. So that it's a good thing yeah. to drive on the left. It's a good thing. Just, just, just yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and I think the history of it came from um, from ships. It was ships where it was most yeah. important. Yeah, it it has uh, historical causes to choose one or the other, and uh, it it could very well be that it is simply um, a choice, and that we should not put too much connotation to this. Yeah. Uh, that's a practical uh, choice. So that. Um, you have to choose, and in such situations, then the connotations don't play a role anymore. I, I would say, uh, and the same is uh, in, in stage, right? You have to. There are different in, in, in on the stage, but also ships, horses, uh, in, in medicine, in, in the theater. Um, there are two perspectives involved. Uh, uh, here, the audience and and the actors, and um, if you say left or right. Uh, as an instruction to the to the um, actor uh, where he should come, he she should come on the stage. Uh, yeah, is it from the perspective of the audience? And so they in uh, France at least they decided to say, well, Côte Jardin is the is the left side. Uh, that in Versailles that was the side where the, the garden was, and uh, the, the right side there was the court. And and uh, these um, uh, expressions are fixed uh, for left and right side. Uh, um, taking from, but but that that is seen from the perspective of the audience, but it's also uh, used for the perspective of the of the actor, and um, this leads so these special situations lead to special terminology. You also have it in in, in ships in, in Dutch at least backboard, stuurboord, uh, with horses. You say hot and hard to instruct the horse, and. Um, in medicine, it's very important that there's no misunderstanding on, on the left and right leg. Uh, and <laughs> yesterday, I uh, met my friend Michael White. He uh, came to my hotel, and I said I, that I would talk about it. He said, yes, his son is, in, um, is, a, is an um, pilot, what is that, uh, uh, pilot in, uh, on an airplane. And they, in the past, they talked about left and right motor, 
um, but uh, um, certain accidents uh, were happened uh, because of misunderstanding. And now it is generally a practice to talk about motor one, motor two, uh, motor three, motor four, and then everybody knows what it is. So uh, uh, that's one problem of um, left right that different perspectives can be involved. Uh, I mean that's not the case with up down. I would say. Um, um, then um, a small excursion about left-handedness um, and the, uh, the cultural impact. Uh, is there cultural impact? We, we left-handers are only 10%. Uh, and it's apparently in all cultures. So uh, throughout the world, uh, it's, it's about 10%. Uh, I saw this recent um, philosophical re reflection on the, the feeling and the phenomenology of, of lived experience of left and right handers, and uh, we left handers um, have to live in a world of dexterocentrism, dexteronormativity, um, and um, this leads uh, to also to words, uh, negative words for this minority, like in English, and there are many more. Um, and uh, you easily find uh, expressions like um, the one I took here from the internet. Uh, that's what I like to call handist, like sexist. Uh, we left-handers as a minority are uh, discriminated. Um, um, so it has an impact in language. Um, so the left-handers have um, their special impact in language. Uh, um, and also in culture, so in Holland, there is a special uh, online shop for left-handers uh, where you can order uh, scissors and, and all things we need to, to survive. Um, um, but all, like here, you can have um, a reversal of values, um, as we saw with Mano Izquierdo in, in specific context. Uh, in Russia, there is an, a, a novel where a skilled craftsman uh, is a main character, and this was a left-hander. Uh, so if you now, in Russia, say uh, this craftsman is a left shy, is a left-hander, that has the connotation, he is very good. Right? But there has a, a special story behind it, so it's a reversal of values. And uh, also in... Inca um, uh, culture, there was a ruler um, who was left-handed, and this also led to positive connotations of being left-handed. So these are, I would say, exceptions with special histor historical explanations. Uh, uh, left-handedness uh, is an intriguing topic, and there are many books about it. Uh, so, and, um, one by here, Chris McManus, right hand, left hand. Um, yeah, if your last name is McManus, you, you have to be interested in, in this topic. Uh, uh, and, but he's a famous researcher in this field, so I see his name everywhere. Um, and the last book is by Claire Porrak, or, or here on the, on the right side, Laterality, exploring the enigma of left-handedness. And these are the typical questions that are treated in these books. Um, is it genetic? Uh, can you change it? Um, um, can you see it in the brain? Um, um, are left-handers more creative? Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, you probably all know the, the paradigm, the work by Casa Santo on left and right handers and um, its imp impact on, on cognition, right? Um, so if you present candidates for a job on the left hand side of, of the paper or on the right hand side, the right handers choose typically the right hand uh, candidates, the right hand listed candidates as the candidates who fit and the left handers have preference for the left hand listed candidates. Um, um, and um, this last reference, uh, de la Fuente, that is um, coming from a research group in Granada, the, the gr from the Grounded Cognition Lab, uh, they uh, replicated this study um, 
in, in Morocco, uh, where left and right is even more strongly connotated than in our culture because um, the, um, the, 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 the hygiene uh, dimension is, is involved. Um, but they found the same results. I mean, uh, so the of, there is no difference. The, the official connotations with left and right are different. The, the conventional so, social uh, uh, associations are stronger in Morocco. Uh, but the cognitive behavior of the left and right handers is the same. So apparently there is a difference between implicit individual um, cognitive orientations and um, what what is officially left and right. Uh, that is interesting because this, this I would say, proves that, that left-handers live in a right-hand world. There is always this, this clash between uh, the cognitive natural tendency and uh, <clears throat> what is in society considered as, as the right side. Um, and here, an anecdote, Casasante also studied Casasante and, and Jasmine, the, <clears throat> the um, gestures by uh, Obama and uh, McCain and Kerry and Bush, uh, two left-handers, two right-handers. Uh, and indeed, uh, when they... Um, when uh, Obama and uh, McCain, two left-handers, when they uh, uh, say something positive and support that with their hand, they use their left hand, right? That is, uh, and and if you're right hand, you you do it with with your right hand. Uh, I was wondering in how far this can lead to misunderstanding with with the audience. Uh, I don't know, uh, well, maybe not. Um, yeah. Um, so we have seen uh, left and hand, uh, left and right in in language and culture. Uh, it's strongly present there, and um, with emotion involved, I would say. Um, this led me to um, more general interest in in laterality, but this is uh, a little bit a, a, a wider context and not not necessary. Uh, but yeah, shall we have a look at it? Um, um, so it's not only left and right hand, but we are uh, very a asymmetric, in fact. So also we have a preferred foot and, and a preferred ear and eye and um, all kinds of behavior. Uh, so some people, uh, um, you can ask yourself, do you do this? Which, or when you clap your hands, which hand is the active hand? Um, um, and one of the most fascinating journals I discovered is this uh, journal Laterality. They uh, study all these phenomena of, of laterality. Uh, for example, um, a recent paper is about the kissing direction. Do you turn your head to the right or to the left when you kiss on the mouse? Um, and they... Um, um, uh, scored uh, about 700 um, um, pictures on the internet um, and found that um, roman romantic kissing, uh, like here between parents, uh, is right-turning kissing, but between parents and children, typically left-turning uh, kissing. Uh, I don't know what this means, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, ag again, um, it is fascinating to see how widespread uh, laterality is uh, <clears throat> present in, in our behavior and, and in our body. Um, and then I ask myself, is it typically human uh, or is there also lateralization in, in uh, animals? The answer is, uh, is it exclusively human? And the answer is no. Also in the animal world, you find lateralization um, uh, like in this book on, on the, the mind of the horse. Uh, if a horse um, smells something, then uh, it, there's the predominance of the right nostril, right? And this goes to the right hemisphere in, 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 the, <clears throat> in the horse. And uh, another example is um, birds who pick grain, they use the right eye to look <laughs> at the grain, <clears throat> and the left 
<coughs> I is look is look to to keep an eye on the on danger in the environment. So um, lateralization, uh, all types of lateralization, is already there in the animal world. Um, this is imp well because um, some time ago I thought, based on certain literature, that. Um, left-right uh, hand uh, lateralization in uh, human beings is exclusively, exclu exclusively human. And, uh, and the explanations in certain literature, literature is that um, uh, holding the shield uh, before your heart with the left hand uh, leaves your right hand uh, for activity. Uh, and also keeping the child to your heart uh, leaves your right hand. So the ultimate cause of our right-handedness is in holding the shield and holding the child to your heart, right? So the heart is on the left, and that causes all the rest. Um, but this story is probably um, uh, too simple or made up, uh, because there are, um, in the animal world, um, already tendencies to, um, to uh, lateralization and uh, handedness. Um, here's a, a recent paper um, on handedness of chim chimpanzees. And uh, yeah, this paper by Tecumseh Fitch, we know that name. Um, and this paper by uh, Bosch from the Max Planck Institute in Berlin. Can you see this chimpanzee who is hanging with the left hand on the, on the rock and fishing with the right and algae uh, and turning the uh, stick around so that algae, uh, it's like spaghetti eating, the, the algae come on the stick and then um, the chimpanzee can eat. Um, and there is a tendency, a tendency to use the right hand, but there are individual, individual differences. You could say, yeah, but also in human humans, there are differences, there are left-handers, but um, it is not the case that there is uh, a, um, ha right-handedness on the species level uh, in, in the chimpanzees. It's on the individual level. It, it's, whereas we can say that in humans, right-handedness is there on the species le level. People are right-handed, except these, uh, this, this minority of left-handers. But uh, normally, Whereas you, you cannot say that on the species level. But there is already uh, a tendency to being right-handed. So, so there is a, a basis there. Uh, but this is strengthened in, in humans, and we are more lateralized, and, and in particular in, with our hands, uh, as this great book by Michael Corbalis, The Lopsided Ape, uh, shows. And uh, this is also, of course, um, uh, in our brains that the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere um, perform different tasks. Uh, as we all, um, we grew up with, as linguists with uh, learning that uh, Broca and Wernicke are the language centers in the left hemisphere. Um, and, um, well, emotion is typically... Uh, uh, and emotion and holistic thinking are typically associated with the right hemisphere. So language and in particular um, um, compositional um, uh, analytic language uh, is strongly connected with, is processed in the, in the left uh, hemisphere. Um, that's, so yeah, left hemisphere, um, there is fine motor uh, control uh, associated with the, le with the right hand, and this fine motor control was probably the basis for, the, was applied to communication signals so that communication became, com communication signals became more analytic, compositional, like you could do with your hands, then you could develop a type of language um, as we know it, so to say, uh, with, with phonemes combined, uh, core syntax, core semantics, combinatorial, um, um, combinatorial language. Right hemisphere dominant for emotion. Um, 
Does the right hemisphere play a role in processing language? Yes. Uh, it, 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 we did not learn it uh, as, as students or for a long time. Uh, there was a strong focus on the left hemisphere in, in linguistics, but I think more and more uh, we find that uh, the right hemisphere plays a role in processing uh, emotional aspects of language and also interpersonal aspects of language and also um, listed down here, um, so integration of meaning in discourse, uh, pragmatics, that has to do with this holistic um, thinking, right? Um, the, the, the holistic view and, and not the analytic uh, aspects. Um, um, ambiguous words and, and uh, semantic relations, not the, the direct semantic relations like between uh, um, doctor and nurse, but between nurse and lawyer, you can say. I can associate nurse and lawyer because they are both professions, but there is a bigger distance. And apparently with these um, weaker semantic relations, uh, there the, the, the right hemisphere takes a role in processing. And my idea was like also with ambiguous words, re the, right, the left hemisphere um, prefers to make a quick decision which is the right meaning in this context, uh, in this sentence. Um, but the, the right hemisphere leaves um, these different meanings open for, for a longer time. And so the, in poetry, this, I think this is important that, that probably th that poetry also um, uses uh, th these, these properties of the, of the right hemisphere. Um, how, how can we find out? Well, one important um, um, experimental design is dichotic listening, uh, that you hear words uh, on uh, one word in one ear and another word in another ear. And normally, there is a right ear advantage, right? Um, because the right ear information goes to the left hemisphere, so I, and then that leads to quick processing. If you um, uh, present uh, neutral words to both ears, then there is a right ear uh, advantage. But if you present uh, emotional words or uh, words pronounced with emotional prosody, then this right ear advantage um, disappears um, because the information from the left ear uh, goes to the right hemisphere. And now uh, processing the right hemisphere also takes it, its stronger part. and. Uh, this is a way to show that indeed the right hemisphere plays a role in um, emotional language, uh, and I don't. You can also show that if you um, uh, present discourse markers, for example, then also I didn't see literature about then the, the right ear advantage should um, uh, re be reduced. Uh, yeah, um, I would like to present um, discourse grammar. It's uh, Bernd Heine. We know Bernd Heine, Tanya Kuteva from grammaticalization literature, but recent, in recent years they developed a grammatical model discourse grammar um, with two components, uh, sentence grammar and satical grammar. Sentence grammar deals with um, traditional core syntax, core semantics, uh, phonology, uh, Antetical grammar, it's an abbreviation of parenthetical, it deals with uh, all the sentence parts that are not core, so the, the, that, that precede the core sentence or are after the core sentence or intermediate parentheticals. Um, um, elements are from tactical grammar, um, here like well, actually, or folk, and also um, emotional elements like uh, vocatives, interjections, um, so interpersonal uh, language, so to say. Um, and they go very far and say, well, um, let's, let's treat them in different components of grammar. And they tried or they proposed that they correlate, as the title says here, on some correlations between grammar and brain lateralization, that these tactical grammar um, um, elements 
are processed in the right hemisphere, or at least they formulated here in a very diplomatic way, let's read it, on the basis of the evidence presented, it would seem safe to conclude that in the same way that sentence grammar is unlikely to be activated without the part participation of the left hemisphere, it is equally unlikely that the activation of tactical grammar phenomena can be achieved without any participation of the right hemisphere. Right, so this uh, is, uh, yeah. Uh, very tentative, but uh, nice. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, now it becomes speculative. It is all my own fantasies. Uh, well, a little bit based on, on literature and also the next one. Um, uh, I wondered, so if we have these two components, can there be traffic or is, is this fixed or can this change uh, diachronically? Can elements... Um, from sentence grammar travel to tactical grammar and, and the other way around. Um, and I mm, would say that there are all kinds of diachronic um, processes that have an impact on in which uh, uh, brain hemisphere the, uh, the processing takes place. And the, the first one is very speculative. Uh, I would say that SOV is more holistic. Um, you know what is happening only when the whole is finished. Uh, and SVO is you go from the subject to what the subject is doing to the object. There's more sequential scanning, uh, more analytic. This has ne never been researched, but this is uh, a suggestion for research, so to say. Can be proof in the brain that the participation of the right hemisphere is stronger in SOV languages? Um, <clears throat> Also, idiophones, um, a recent paper by Mark Dingemans and co-author, idiophones, like in Japanese, are typically realized before or after the sentence. They, they are um, yeah, uh, sensory words uh, where you can, uh, in an expressive way, uh, describe that something ha happened quickly, or so, for example. But these idiophones, um, which are real, realized mm, often not in, in the core sentence, through time they can be used as normal adverbs, and you can say he um, ran quickly, uh, quickly as part of the core sentence. And then these words lose expressive uh, phonological features, and also yeah, they become more normal words. So uh, it should, uh, my um, idea is, try to find out whether this also has an impact on uh, the, the participation of left and right hemisphere in processing the idiophone when it is realized a sentence peripheral, peripheral, peripherally or uh, in, in the sentence. I suggested this to Mark Dengemans, uh, who is in Nijmegen, but he, he said, yeah, we, we could look at it, but it hasn't been done yet. Um, the same with... Um, pragmaticalization or co-optation, uh, as, as Heine calls it. So you can take elements from sentence grammar and use it as pragmatic markers, like well, and actually, diachronically, they are pragmaticalized. And uh, so then also, the, the where they are processed should change. Um, I mean, it, it, it could be that in the long run, the right hemisphere has no work to do anymore because uh, the whole development goes to the, to the left hemisphere. And, and this has happened, but I, I'm saying here that um, there is uh, stuff coming, developing, that is uh, for the right hemisphere, so to say. So uh, uh, also fixed expressions. Uh, uh, our colleague Joop van der Horst uh, in, 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 in Holland um, is a, he knows the history of Dutch very well, and his his claim is that um, the number of fixed expressions uh, increased enormously in the past few centuries. That in the Middle Age, Middle Dutch, um, there are not many fixed expressions. I don't know about other languages, but maybe this is this is a general trend that the number of fixed expressions, uh, phraseologies, uh, increase than. This is food for the right hemisphere, so to say, because they are more holistic and uh, typically also more emotional. Fixed expressions lose, typically lose um, referential meaning and, and, and gain um, expressive meaning. Uh, 
Ja, dit um, goes too far probably. Um, so this is a, a, a book, a, a, a huge book about critique of Western culture that in our Western culture, the left hemisphere uh, plays a too big role. The left hemisphere should have the role of an emissary and the master is the right hemisphere. Um, and, um, but uh, through our analytic uh, culture, the left hemisphere plays uh, a, a big role more and more so that we are in a kind of unnatural unbalance. So this is a, and uh, yeah, maybe this is also the case in linguistics that we are uh, focusing on language as it is processed in the left hemisphere, the analytic part of, of language and, and not on the holistic aspects of language. Uh, so this, my whole presentation can also be interpreted as a plea for balanced uh, linguistics. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> when I was uh, studying applied linguistics in, at the UNAM in Mexico City back in the in the late uh, 80s, I used to have um, uh, she was a psycholinguistic teacher. She was German, and she happened to be left-handed. And uh, on the walls of her office, she had this sign that said, uh, "If the right part of the body is governed by the left part of the brain, then only." Left-handed people are in their right minds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I wanted to say that, that in favor uh, of you left-handed people. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for, for questions. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Okay. Hello. <laughs> Um, so uh, I, I was interested, you talked about the um, valence, I, I suppose, associated with left and right. Um, did, uh, could you say some words about uh, other cognitive aspects or other emotional aspects associated with left and right? And uh, I guess what made me think about this is your, your slide about the, the Buddhist interpretation um, and then shortly after the slide about the political interpretation. Um, and those are, those are places where I think the... the there's a more complex representation or symbology yeah. involved. Uh, I would say here. Oh, no. This is, is it still working? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It should be. Um, I think here is room for cultural variation, uh, like, like this um, hygiene uh, dimension uh, that is associated with left and right is strongly present in certain cultures, whereas in other cultures it does not play such a strong role. And uh, so we could list um, other aspects like um, the norm uh, um, or deviating from the norm, like uh, that is applied in, in politics and, and in Buddhism and so on. Uh, so that would be an, an interesting uh, topic for further study to, to list these demands and look in, uh, in the different cultures which are profiled and salient. Uh, is that an answer to your yes. question? Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for the presentation and a short comment on the uh, on the role of the left and uh, right side in art. Because uh, in uh, Russian icons, for example, uh, left means that there is a lack of faith and the right means there is a faith. But uh, you have to... Uh, look from the perspective of the character on the icon and not from the uh, from the viewer. So you have to change it. And if you look from the perspective of the viewer, that would be the opposite. Right, right, right. Okay, thank you. Uh, you did I understand you well that you say uh, a dimension of face, face, uh, faith, 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 belief. I see, I see, belief and. Um, what does it mean exactly then? Uh, uh, that left means lack of uh, faith. Those who are on the left, from the uh, point of view of the character, are those who don't believe. And uh, those who are on the right, those who believe in God. Yeah, that, but that is, goes back or to the Bible also, oh, that, yeah. that uh, yeah. God puts the people who believe him uh, put on his. Ad dextera patris, 
Uh, yeah, so that is in, in Russian, but I would say that is part of the Christian uh, religious tradition, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so in that sense, that fits, uh, that's more general to be against the norm, and it has this more specific meaning in, in religion as the believers who follow the word of God, so to say, uh, and who are on the right side of God. Uh. There is a good article about it, but it's in Russian, so I can't recommend it. It's by Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh. Well, we have time for just one more question. Lena. <laughs> Thank you for a very, very interesting presentation. Um, I was particularly interested in when you were talking about the, the left and right peripheries of the sentence. Yeah. Um, there is this book, uh, I think was published in 2015 or 16, I can't remember, by Degis and someone else on the pragmatic functions of the left and right peripheries. And I think there, one of the underlying theories was that um, in the left periphery, we've, we tend to find elements which have a more discourse organizational function, whereas the interpersonal, more interpersonal elements were typically found in the right periphery. Ah. And I was wondering whether this could be <laughs> associated with the, with the lateralization. Um, That's an exciting idea. Yeah, uh, I, I found it very interesting as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I'm interested in this reference and want to take a look at it. So. Uh, left peripheral uh, discourse uh, integ Elements, integration, like right periphery, um, what did you say? No, uh, uh, we're talking about elements which are not integrated in the yeah, core yeah, of, yeah, the, yeah. of the yeah, core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the left yeah. uh, had more uh, discourse organizational right. functions right. and the right had more interpersonal, interpersonal um, yeah. I don't know, emotive, non-representational non 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 functions. I think that was I, one of the underlying theories in the I book. I don't immediately recognize that. Yeah. I, do you know this volume on final particles? Um, la, uh, oh. It's about final particles in different languages by the Greuter last year, uh, edit, okay, uh, no. edited by um, Sylvie Hansil uh, and Mar Marty Post and uh, Hazelo. Uh, I contributed yeah. there, and we looked at final particles oh. in Dutch. Uh, that also have um, a discourse organizing yeah. function, yeah, uh, yeah. but maybe quantitatively it yes. could be. There that was a tendency. They talked a about a tendency, tendency could, but could very, not in every so case. It's an interesting idea yes. whether there are functional differences between mm -hmm. markers on the left and the right. So yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid it's time to finish this first uh, plenary talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dad, for this. Thank you.